Welcome to my bedroom. I have been diligently collecting my trash for just shy of 12 months and I'm here to show it to you today. I particularly love Empty's content because I think you get really robust reviews. I like to know what are people actually finishing. So we've got uh, skincare, makeup, hair care, fragrance, a little bit of everything. So let us start first with skincare. Cleansers. So I have two of the Bioderma Sensor Bio. This is my go-to for late nights or if I'm not wearing much makeup or even makeup fixes uh, during makeup application. It's a classic, always, always have some Bioderma in my collection. I've got some oil and emollient balmy kind of cleansers. Uh, so my favorite perhaps is the Fankel Mild Cleansing Oil. I've been using this for years and years, recently rediscovered it. It is just, it just hits the mark on all of my cleansing oil desires. It's got the perfect viscosity, it removes all uh, sunscreen, long wearing makeup, and then it rinses clean. I don't have anything bad to say about it, aside from the fact that it's kind of a little bit difficult to get. I have here the Paula's Choice Omega Plus Cleansing Balm. I liked this, I finished it. It struck me as kind of like a very no frills cleansing balm. It didn't have much of a smell. The, the texture was quite thin. It just didn't really impress me, but it, um, it did its job. I don't think I'll be repurchasing that one. I've got here the Dermalogica Pre-Cleanse. This is another one of my old favorite cleansing oils. Have been purchasing this since I was 14 years old. It has quite a, a herbal essential oil smell for those of you who'd prefer not to have a fragrance, but I love it. And I think that it uh, functions really beautifully will always repurchase pre-cleanse. Uh, one more cleansing oil. This is the Aven Lipid Replenishing Cleansing Oil. So the first time I used this, I proceeded as though it was a regular cleansing oil and I really struggled to spread it across my face because it was so thick. Uh, I added a few drops of water and it began to foam. So I think this cleansing oil might be a little bit drunk I ended up uh, using it as a bit of a second cleanse. And for that, I liked it, but I don't think I liked it enough to repurchase. Uh, another cleanser, I gather that this one has quite a cult following. It seems like it's a bestseller. This is the Youth to the People Kale and Green Tea Spinach Superfood Cleanser. I liked it. I'm not sure if I loved it. Uh, again, it just struck me as quite a standard foamy cleanser and I enjoyed it, but likely not repurchasing. And then finally on the cleanser front, I have the Dermalogica Special Cleansing Gel. This is another one that I've used on and off uh, throughout the years. Really uh, gentle, uh, fabulous for a second cleanse or a morning cleanse, never irritated my skin, would repurchase. I have two exfoliants. The Ren Glycolactic Radiance Renewal Mask. This is another one that I've been buying for years. And it's a great one if you're new to chemical exfoliants because it uses uh, very gentle enzymes just to eat away at the very surface of the skin. It's a great gentle option and I, I would definitely repurchase that one. And of course, the Dermalogica Daily Microfoliant, another favorite. It would appear recently that I've been really coming back to my favorites. I think you'll notice that throughout this video. This is a powder uh, exfoliant that you mix with the water to make a paste and it uses both physical and chemical action to, to buff the skin. If I wanna have a fabulous foundation day, I start the day with this. I have four vitamin C serums here. I'm big on vitamin C at the moment. The Sunday Riley CEO 15% vitamin C, this slot into my routine so seamlessly. I would apply it as a morning mo moisturizer and then go straight to SPF. And I, I just like the idea of really streamlining my routine and this helped me do that. Uh, definitely one that I would repurchase and I did notice brightening effects. My skin was fabulous when I was using that product. For a little bit more of an affordable option, the Revolution 12.5% vitamin C, this I purchased at Priceline and I've gone through two bottles already. It is a fabulous, affordable, effective vitamin C. I um, would recommend that one. I've got the Holy Frog Sunnyside Sea Glow Serum. I enjoyed this. It just wasn't as much of a standout as perhaps some of the others. 
the Dermalogica Biolumin C Gel Moisturizer. So this is a lightweight gel moisturizer that has that vitamin C action and another one that just slot into my routine so seamlessly, layered with all my other SPFs and makeups perfectly. And I think that this would be a good option, light moisturizer option for oilier skin, because it's kind of like a gel. Okay, we've got uh, the Vela Days Multi-Active Facial Serum. So this is enriched with cannabis sativa seed extract. It's fragrance fee, vegan. And I enjoyed this serum, but I don't know that I was necessarily blown away by it. There's another Veladay's product that I, I much prefer. So we'll talk about that in a sec. And then I have the Ordinary Niacinamide 10% and Zinc 1%. I heard and read so many wonderful reviews about this product and I'm sure that it works for many. It did absolutely zero for me. I went through the whole bottle trying to discern a difference, would not repurchase. Next, onto moisturizer. I have some holy grails here. This is the Fresh uh, Deep Hydration Face Cream. This smell is amazing. It's like cucumbers and rose, an absolute pleasure to use. The texture is like a dense gel. It cocoons the skin and in the next morning when I wake up, my skin is just super plump and juicy and happy. I went through two and I would go through many more, would repurchase. A similar style and texture, the It Cosmetics uh, Hello Results Serum, this is a retinol product and I mean, I, I kept asking myself, like, am I dreaming when I was using this product? Because my skin looked fabulous. It was definitely um, a, a good skin day that lasted a few months here. Uh, I would definitely repurchase that one better for, again, a little bit more of a drier skin type because it's got that dense cocoon hydration texture. Uh, another one that would be a good option if you have very sensitive skin or if you suffer from dermatitis or eczema, the Coenna Dermaceutical Skincare Cream. This was one that I used when my skin was really compromised and prone to perioral dermatitis and it never irritated. Love that. Um, I'm not sure that I would be repurchasing it right now because I don't suffer with those kind of skin conditions um, anymore, fingers crossed, um, but definitely a good one. One of my favorite oils, I feel like this one is underrated. People don't speak about it as much. The Sunday Riley Juno. This is quite a lightweight oil and it absorbs really readily. It's fabulous for even during the day, during the night. I love to put a thick layer over my hands and sleep in it. It gives me the most soft, lush hands. I also really enjoy the smell. And I think that although smell shouldn't matter as much, I think that pleasure is an important part of skincare because if you enjoy it, you're more likely to engage in it. So I would repurchase Juno. And then this Vela Days product, I would 100% repurchase. This is the Canna Complex Fortifying Oil Serum. It's a fabulous um, medium weight oil. But my favorite part of this is that the oil came in a pump which meant that I didn't have to like fuss around with a pipette and, a, and that kind of situation. It was really convenient. And when I was in a rush, amazing, I would repurchase. Next, let us talk eye creams. I'm trying to get into the habit of using an eye cream. I have many in my drawer, so I figure it's a good opportunity to, to give my eye area some love. I've got the Laneige Eye Sleeping Mask, which has a fabulous applicator that I really enjoyed. It's like a cold ball tip. Um, I, don't, I didn't really notice much of a difference and I found that that packaging was way too large. It just took me forever to go through that. Let's talk about sunscreen. I have been very diligent and religious with my sunscreen. I'm feeling really good about it. I have here the Dr. G Airy Skin Up, which I mentioned in my 2021 Beauty Favorites video, a fabulous, lightly dewy gel sunscreen. Uh, layers beautifully under makeup, very cosmetically elegant, um, would 100% repurchase. It's relatively inexpensive um, online. The SkinCeuticals uh, UV Defense Sunscreen, the tinted version. I like the tint, it, kind of, it fit my skin tone. If you're far lighter or deeper, I'm not sure that it would be a great match. But I did like the, the coverage that it gave me. It was nice for every day. The sunscreen that I'm wearing now, no one asked, but in case you wanted to know, I just purchased this. The Beauty of Joson, uh, relief sun screen. Uh, you guys recommended this to me on my Instagram and so far it's one of my favorites. But we'll wait for the next empties for that one. Okay, on to makeup.
The Cossus 10 second eyeshadow in Globe. You guys have seen this eyeshadow on my channel. This is one of my holy grails. It has a beautiful glossy quality on the eyelid and Globe is a really easy to wear sort of champagne bronzy shade. And as the name suggests, I can legitimately do my eyeshadow in 10 seconds. Hence why it became a holy grail and definitely something that I'll be repurchasing ASAP. Always need that in my collection. I have a bunch of uh, ColourPop mascaras. The Level Up Lengthening mascaras and also the Act Natural mascaras. These come in both a brown and a black. For the record, if you're a brown mascara lover, ColourPop has fabulous brown mascaras. The brown is just right in that it looks really natural and it's not quite black, but it's not a murky brown. They do a great brown mascara. Out of these two formulas, my favorite is definitely the Act Natural. I just got much more uh, length and separation and drama from, from that one. The Level Up, eh, not my fave. Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Push Up Lashes. I featured this in many favorites videos. Uh, it has a plastic wand and it's fabulous for separation and longevity. The longevity on this baby is amazing. It has been pushed from its ranks as Holy Grail Mascara. It has been overshadowed by this guy. This is the Byredo, Byredo, Byredo Space Black Mascara. This has become my holy grail. You've heard me talk about that one many times. The Huda Beauty Legit Lashes. Uh, this is a double-sided mascara. I always prefer this uh, curling side. This is quite similar to the Charlotte Tilbury in that it's really fabulous uh, separation and uh, not so much about volume, more about the length and separation. But again, the Byredo. It's just, it gives me more of a fluffier, wispier vibe, which I prefer. I've got a mascara that I wouldn't repurchase. This is the Nude Sticks Vegan Splash Proof Mascara. It wasn't particularly long wearing on me, one thing. And then also, how do you guys feel about this? These big spiky balls on the end of mascara wands, to me, are a hazard. I always manage to, in a rush in the morning, poke myself in the eye will not be repurchasing that one. And then on the lash kind of front, I have dabbled in eyelash serums. I love what they do to my lashes. They give me a permanent looking panda eye, kind of discolors my lash line, but I do, do really find that they work. And this is the Eye Envy. I'm gonna try the Revitalash next. I thought that Revitalash now is stocked in Priceline. I didn't know that, that's awesome. Let's talk about brows. I have three brow gels here. The Surat Brow Pomade. This is a holy grail circa like 2016 or something. This has a waxy pomade texture and it's fabulous if you like that real brushed up model brow. It is quite expensive and there are many uh, products coming out nowadays that have a similar vibes fulfill a similar purpose. Um, kind of similar actually to the MAC False Lashes Maximizer. I, this is actually made to be a eye mascara primer, but I use this in my brows in much the same way as the Surat Brow Pomade, and it works in a really similar way. And then one more brow uh, gel, this is the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. I think this might be like my fifth tube or something that I've gone through. It's a clear brow gel, it has fabulous hold, and it's just really easy, it never goes crusty, never does any kind of white dusty business, and for that reason it becomes my morning, my morning go-to. Have repurchased, would repurchase. Hair. <laughs> So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've really been trying the most <laughs> with my hair. I always felt like a massive hair noob. I felt like my hair really just was a bit of a bird's nest all the time. So I've been making a real effort, especially post Accutane. Accutane did a real number on my hair. I've been really trying to treat my hair right and style it as well as I can. You guys can tell me how you think I'm doing, but some shampoo and conditioner that I enjoyed um, is by the brand Virtue. I love Virtue hair care. Um, this is the curl shampoo and conditioner. My favorite Virtue products are the ones in the mint bottle. That to me is the absolute standout of the line. Don't know if I would have repurchased these two, even though I enjoyed them, I enjoyed them enough. 
a bougie shampoo that I actually think might be worth the money for a specific set of people. The Orbe Shampoo for Moisture and Control. This was a game changer when my hair was really dry and unmanageable and frizzy uh, and disobedient when I was on Accutane. This was one of the few things I felt like really moisturized my hair. So if that sounds like you, that might be one to check out. And then a hair mask. I've been masking so much, so much. The Christoph Robin uh, Color Shield Mask. This was just okay to me. Christoph Robin makes a lot of fabulous products and to me this is probably not one of the ones that I would repurchase. Um, it left a little bit of a funny film on my hair. Olaplex. Tell me what you think in the comments. Do you notice a difference when you use Olaplex? I know that the science is there. All of my hairdressers tell me that, um, you know, it's a really robust science, but I genuinely notice no difference when I use Olaplex, but I keep doing it. So I would like to hear your take on that. A drugstore hair mask that I enjoyed is the Clorane Nourishing Mask with Mango. This is a medium to uh, heavyweight mask, so best for those of you who have kind of drier hair. Um, but I did really enjoy it and it smells like mango, delightful. I have two heat protectants. The NAC Leave-In Conditioner, it was okay, it was fine. It uh, uh, detangled and protected my hair from heat, though I didn't notice any additional benefits. And then I also have the Wella Perfect Setting Light Setting Lotion Spray. This I would use uh, before I blow dried my hair and I found that my style lasted longer. My curls would last longer if I curled them that day and it does also protect your hair. So I liked it, not sure that I would repurchase because I've got, I've got a few new favorites. Um, this is actually a product that I have repurchased many times and I would repurchase again. One sec. Oh. If you have ever thought to yourself, I'd like to use more hair oils, but the whole getting the oil hair in the hands is something that you're not really wanting to do in the morning. This is kind of like an oil, a light oil product, but in a spray. And I think that's really convenient. This is the Kevin Murphy Shimmer Me Blonde. It's a shine spray that you pop onto the, the hair dry, wet, after styling, during styling. And it really does give the hair so much luster and shine. Uh, even if you're not a blonde, that's one that everyone can use. On to dry shampoo. I have here the Bumble and Bumble Preda Powder Dry Shampoo. We just really get along. I've got two of these and I've purchased a third. I just really get along with this dry shampoo. We understand each other. I also wanna say I have been using dry shampoo wrong for years and I wanna share my experience with you. I would just spray the product into the roots and then brush it out 10 minutes later. No, incorrect. Spray the dry shampoo into the roots, give it 10 minutes to do its absorbency magic, and then really massage the dry shampoo into the scalp. I know it says that on the instructions. I never read the instructions. I certainly don't follow them, but if you massage, the product works much better. It's much more absorbent. The hair feels much cleaner. Report back if, if, you, if you try that. I also have the Clorane uh, dry shampoo with oat milk, a classic, a drugstore classic. This one has quite a bit of grit, so if you like volume, that's one to go for. I have the Moroccan oil dry texture spray. This is a good alternative to the Orbe dry texture spray. Um, if you want something a little bit more on the affordable side, it gives hair a little bit more of a roughed up texture. It gives your curls a little bit of um, a little bit of grit and edge. And then also the another dry shampoo, the Clorane dry shampoo. I love the mini sizes. I take them traveling with me. Clorane, a classic, would repurchase. Uh, this is a hairspray, the Batiste Stylist Hold Me hairspray. A little bit of a funky smell, uh, but functions beautifully, keeps my curls in, in place, and it's a good affordable product, would repurchase. On to some body care. I love a nice body wash. It's just such a luxury, everyday luxury that I really appreciate. This is the Dermalogica Conditioning Body Wash. It smells like eucalyptus and lavender, really nice unisex scent. I think that even, even the husbands um, will enjoy this one in the shower. I'm not sure if I would repurchase necessarily because I have this guy and this is a standout. The uh, L'Occitane Almond Shower Oil. This is, if you need to buy a gift for anyone, this is the way to go. It is a beautiful luxury. It has 
an, a bit of a moisturizing, filmy kind of finish. And I find that I don't even need to moisturize after I get out of the shower because my skin feels so lovely and hydrated. I have also a Dermalogica Phyto Replenish Body Oil. So this is, I actually use this to shave. It, it's an emulsifying uh, body oil, so it turns milky and rinses clean. And I found that this gave me the closest shave of anything I've ever tried. And since then, I've been using cleansing oils to, to shave. What a game changer. Next, I have a few nail bits and bobs. I finished a nail polish. That rarely happens for me. This is Yves Saint Laurent Jade Imperial, which is the most beautiful, cloudy, desaturated, sagey, jade and i really enjoyed this i have a few shades like it so i don't know if i'll be rushing out to repurchase um, but if you love a green this is one of the best out there i also have the ysl uh, top coat eh, eh. i wouldn't spend that kind of money on this one again let me know your favorite top coat in the comment section down below i think for me so far it's either the sally hansen top coat or the sesh Vite for a real gel top coat uh, and then I also have a base coat. This is the Orly rubberized base coat. Uh, my understanding is this has a cult following as well. I liked it, but I wasn't necessarily wowed by it. So if you have a great base coat recommendation, I am all ears. On to fragrance. Fragrance. Scent occupies a very special place in my heart. I love fragrance. And I've been really trying actually to, to finish some of the ones that just had a little bit left. So I have uh, the Jo Malone Nectarine Blossom and Honey. This is quite a sweet, fruity fragrance. So if sweet, fruity is your vibe. That's, um, that's one to check out. Not sure if I would be repurchasing that one. It's not necessarily one of my favorites from Jo Malone. I do really like the English Pear and Freesia. I finished a small one of these. This is quite a light uh, floral and slightly fruity fragrance, also in a similar vein. A fragrance from Jo Malone that I 100% would repurchase. This is Rose and Magnolia, which to me, it seems like such an elegant and composed scent. Something really timeless. I could imagine a bride wearing this one, would repurchase, have repurchased. Um, Derek Lamb 10 Crosby. Just imagine with me. Milky, a bit powdery, but also carbonated, like carbonated milk. It's really lovely. I, I, I know that my, my description doesn't sound it, but it is a really lovely, uh, comforting scent. This one, I'm really sad to let go of. I have a strong emotional attachment to this. It's the Mate Heliotrope and Patchouli by Dame Perfumery. I purchased this in a niche um, perfumery in San Francisco. And Heliotrope is one of my all time favorite notes. This to me is such a classy take on Heliotrope. A Little bit almondy, a little bit marzipan, very beautiful. Would repurchase if I could get a hold of it. Uh, a fragrance uh, by an Australian brand. This is Who Is Elijah Her Her. I featured this in my most recent uh, fragrance video. Really crisp and fresh and clean. Like a boss woman wearing a collared shirt. It's a beautiful fragrance would repurchase. And Alien. This fun fact was my signature scent in high school. So whenever I smell this, it gives me all of the nostalgic feels. And for that reason, I must always have a bottle in my collection, love Alien. And sometimes when I'm walking down the street, I'll smell someone and be like, oh, Alien. <laughs> it's classic. In true beauty guru style, I have so many candles to show you. If you love peach as a note, then you should check out the Volu Spa Ebony and Peach. This is really peach forward and that's one of my favorite notes. I love that one, would repurchase anything peach. I have two candles here from Jo Malone. Uh, this is the Lavender and Moonflower, which is part of their most recent collection. It has a very unisex, adult, chic kind of vibe and um, definitely very relaxing and serene. Love that one. But my favorite 
candle ever from Jo Malone and I've tried many. The Jo Malone green tomato vine, it made my house feel like a really chic holiday destination. Yeah, very um, clean, a little bit herbaceous, but it just smelled expensive. I really enjoyed that. Some brands that you might not have heard out that I would love to shout out. Claire Makes, this is a small Australian brand that makes uh, candles that are reminiscent of Australiana. So it's got all those Australian botanical ingredients um, that feel really, really like home. And I thought all of these fragrances were really well balanced and very unisex. So whoever is in the house, I think, will really enjoy those. She's got these uh, larger candles with the beautiful wood base and really chic, a beautiful addition to, to any home. And I also have uh, the Southern Wild Co. This is an interesting Australian brand. Um, Southern Wild Co is based in the bush and they work with Australian artists and iconic bush poetry to craft scents that feel Australian. I love that. This smell, when I smelt this, I couldn't leave the store without it. It's a little bit smoky, vanilla, spicy, warm, a little bit organic. Oh, I absolutely loved that one. The Astrology Atelier Taurus, not a Taurus, but Bulgarian rose, maple, orange, vanilla, and sandalwood. Too good, too good to pass up. Warm, vanilla, oh, absolutely adored that one. Uh, that completes this empties video. I would love to know what you would like to see next on this channel. Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you'd like to see a little bit more of me, you can come say hi on Instagram at Kareem and Kimmy. I will see you soon. Thanks for coming over.